Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a great leeway into like what my second my second question was, which is uh, wh why should you not date, or re really like uh, what are bad re bad reasons to date? Yeah, so Song of Solomon talks about do not wait awaken love before it's time. And so as I think about like high school students, like going out on a date to determine if someone is is you know someone that they should marry, you begin to spend time with them. I mean, you just, you, your body is going through just an explosion of hormones. That's why we were both the worst version of ourselves in that time. And, and you it's hard, honestly, it's very, very difficult to control yourself in that season. And so when you start to spend alone time with the opposite sex, there's a lot of temptation that comes that you've experienced. I know you, you've experienced this. And so the reason that the world dates is uh, to experience these manic highs and manic lows. And so I think in some ways what happens is we get addicted to the manic highs and manic lows. You get addicted to the drama. Everybody's seen drama. Everybody knows the, the, you know, the, the captain of the football team broke up with the head cheerleaders, the talk of the school, and she you know, got drunk one night or something happened. And I'm not talking about anybody specific, by the way. I'm using generalities here. Uh, and so, Right, and it, and it just becomes this drama. Well, the problem with some people is they get addicted to drama and it's, it's like they, they don't know. I would say you want a marriage that's not reality TV worthy because reality TV is like stuff's getting thrown against the wall. I love you, I hate you. It's full of passion and anger. And you want a marriage that is just consistent and steady. And so no producer saying, man, I'd love to film you guys because your, your marriage is so full of drama, right? Uh, Chip and Joanna would be the exception, right? But they're they're fixing up houses, so that's the there's another plot twist going on. But I think um, I think that the world dates to experience the extreme emotions and all the feels. And it's interesting, Derek, because Hollywood is the one that is giving us all this dating instruction, like informing us through movies and TV shows and reality shows. And Hollywood has the worst divorce rate. Like they have the worst track record. So the people who are the worst at it are giving us the instruction on how to do it. And, and I just hope you guys would be wise and in, in discerning in who you're choosing to be your teachers. Like make sure your teachers have the results that you want. And what's crazy is there's people out there and folks that, are go, that you go to school with that they want, you know, the, the relationship that ends. <laughs> and it's crazy, but they like, they love to get obsessed with talking about, you know, how somebody loves somebody else or like who Billie Eilish is dating or whatever. And, and it's, and, and you, you don't like, there's like, look at those songs, man. Like that girl is troubled, <laughs> you know, like she's, she's having a hard time and you don't want, you don't want the heartbreak that she's going through. No, I, I mean, I think that's all, man, that's super good. Um, like who are your teachers and like just evaluating that and like, you know, it starts with a why, like, why are you dating? And, and if you're, if you're wanting to date to get a spouse, like, why would you date like people that, that aren't doing that well? Um, I think something else I see with uh, teenagers and even um, people that are, that are older and you could, you could add on to this if you want is people date for perception. Um, they date for the, they date the person that will help them the most in, in the perception uh, that, that other people have of them. It's almost like a popularity contest and like, it's kind of notches on the belt. And sometimes that happens with, like physical encounters, but sometimes it just happens in like the person that you date and you hope that they, they um, prop you up in some sort of way. Yeah, which is using people. There's probably students that would advocate against using people. And you see things like the Me Too movement and there's all of these things that are happening in our society where it, it's just, it's, we just take a really strong stance against using people because it's, it's wrong to use people. Like we, we love people and use tools, right? Or we love people and use things. We don't love things and use people. Uh, pagans love things and use people. We love people and use things. And so I think that, um, I think that, yeah, that in high school, there's a real temptation to accessorize your life like a letter jacket. And you think, oh, man, he's going to look really good in the picture. I'm going to really look good in the picture. And our prom picks are going to be so strong. And our Insta game is going to be strong. And, yeah, you're, you're using somebody. You are guilty of using somebody when you do that. And, and I just – I would be cautious. Like, here's a question. Like, if dating is for the purpose of marriage, like, should you even date in high school? Like, I, I think – like, I tell my kids all the time. I just sit them down and I say, listen, you, everybody's about to go boy crazy. Like, cause I have girls old, my girls are older. 
and say, hey, everybody in your class is about to go boy crazy. And, and they're like, yeah, dad, it's happening. And I'm like, hey, just just watch, watch it. Just watch what happens because you're going to see friends get their hearts broken. Like relationships right now don't go anywhere well. And someone always wants to argue with me because I've had this conversation for a while. I said, no, man, you know, my parents, they were high school sweethearts. It's like, that's cute. Okay. So one out of a million, you know, works out. That's great. So you got a million heartbreaks, right? People who've been in relationship after relationship after relationship. And the problem with dating in high school is you start to train yourself for divorce because you get in a relationship so you don't want to be in a relationship anymore than you get out. And then you get in a relationship so you don't want to be in a relationship anymore than you get out. And you get in a relationship so you don't want to be in a relationship anymore than you get out. And then you get in a marriage and all of a sudden you feel really stuck because all you know is getting out of relationships when you don't want to be in them. And so you've gone to a university your entire life that has trained you for divorce and uh, you, don't, you don't know how to do monogamy and commitment. And so, yeah, I think it's something I, I've, I've observed, like, who am I, right? I'm just a preacher, right? Here's the other side of that, though. I've observed the lives of tens and thousands of young adults, tens of thousands. Like, just hear that. Like, I have had a front row seat for tens of thousands of young adults. I've seen the ones that have worked out really well. Like, they, they've gone and they've been successful in life and they love Jesus and they have a thriving relationship with God and they have a healthy marriage and you know, two kids and a German shepherd and a picket, white picket fence in the suburbs or whatever the dream is, right? Uh, I've seen the people that have gotten that and have gotten along and they have a healthy, thriving marriage. And I've seen a lot of relationships end in disaster. And I think that some of the healthiest followers of Jesus now, because I'm not ready for marriage. And when I'm ready for marriage, then I'll step into dating. But until then, like, I'm just going to save myself the, 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 the pain and the drama of the breakup and the, the preoccupation of, you know, having someone that I'm having to think about all the time and, and just like, what does that even mean and look like right now?